Paul Kagame is a charismatic leader who has been at the forefront of Rwanda's transformation. He was born in 1957 in southern Rwanda, rose to prominence as a rebel commander during the Rwandan Civil War, and was instrumental in bringing an end to the Rwandan genocide. Kagame quickly set about rebuilding the country, implementing a series of reforms aimed at modernizing the economy and improving the standard of living for the Rwandan people after taking power in the year 2000. Under his leadership, Rwanda has become one of the fastest growing economies in Africa, with a thriving tech sector and a rapidly expanding middle class. Despite this, Kagame's rule has been criticized for its authoritarianism, with some accusing him of suppressing political opposition and violating human rights. In this video, we will be taking about the life and legacy of Paul Kagame and learn about his impact on Rwanda and its future. Let's begin. Paul Kagame's Early Life he was born on October 23, 1957, in Tamwe, Rwanda. Kagame's family enjoyed a comfortable life in Rwanda due to their successful business and their connection to the country's royalty. However, ethnic tensions were rising due to the preference shown to the Tutsi ethnic group by the colonial powers. The Hutu uprising in 1959 marked the start of a period of violence and social revolution in Rwanda. The violence caused Kagame's family to flee their home, leaving behind their valuables which were looted by others. The family fled to nearby Nanza and eventually crossed the border to Uganda, where they settled in a refugee camp in the early 1960s. Life as a refugee in Uganda was difficult, with poorly equipped and infrequently supplied camps. The family moved to different refugee camps and finally settled in Toro District, where they stayed for the rest of Paul's childhood years. Despite the challenges they faced as refugees, Kagame's family persevered and eventually settled in Uganda for the next three decades. This experience likely had a significant impact on Kagame's life and may have shaped his perspectives and experiences. Paul Kagame is a Rwandan who achieved academic excellence at a young age, ranking at the top of his class in primary school in Tere. However, his academic achievements caused administrative problems for local authorities in Uganda. Kagame and other Rwandan children experienced harassment that reminded them of their outsider status in the foreign land. In a refugee camp, Kagame befriended Emmanuel Gisa, also known as Fred Rigima, when he was just three years old in 1960. They became best of friends and people who did not know them thought they were brothers. After Kagame's father, Diagratius, passed away in the early 1970s and Fred Rigirma left for an unknown location, Kagame's academic performance declined and he became more inclined to fight those who belittled the Rwandan population in Uganda. This eventually led to Kagame's expulsion from Terra School. He finished his studies without distinction at Old Kampala Secondary School. Kagame's life took a significant turn when he met Yoweri Museveni, a graduate of Ontario School, who became his mentor and political inspiration. Museveni was already a political activist and an opponent of how the authorities were running Uganda. He was aware of the general plight of Rwandan refugees, knew they perceived themselves as outcasts, and realized their youngsters like Kagame would have little to lose in joining a rebellion against the Ugandan government. Museveni promised to topple the government of E.D. Amin and later the government of Milton Obote, giving Kagame a purpose and a vision for his future. Friend Rigirma and Paul Kagame, who were childhood friends from Western Uganda, joined Yori Museveni's rebel group in the late 1970s in Tanzania and fought in the 1979 war to overthrow the Ugandan government. After Museveni came to power, Kagame was trained as a spy by the Tanzanian government and became an intelligence officer for Museveni's newly formed National Resistance Army in 1981. He often went on missions to gather information in rural areas and eventually rose to become head of military intelligence after Museveni overthrew the government in 1986. Paul Kagame and the Rwanda Patriotic Front Paul Kagame was one of the founding members of the Rwandan Patriotic Front, commonly known as the RPF, which was established in 1987 by exiled Rwandans under the leadership of Fred Rigirma. 
The Rwandese Alliance for National Unity and the Rwandan Refugees Welfare Foundation came together to become the RPF. Rigirma was gregarious and good at forming coalitions, but Kagame was known for his seriousness and methodical ruthlessness. Rigirma was able to become the RPF leader thanks to these characteristics. Despite their ascent to significant positions within the Ugandan administration, hostility toward Rwandan refugees was building there, and by the end of 1989, President Museveni had come under intense political pressure and had dismissed both Kagame and Rigirma from their positions. As Kagame and Rigirma were preparing to launch a military assault into Rwanda, President Museveni sent Kagame to Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, for military training in 1990. Museveni hoped that at the same time, the exile's ambitions to invade northern Rwanda would be thwarted. By 1990, the RPF had continued to form and arm itself as the exiled Rwandans in Uganda felt more and more unwelcome there. The RPF began advocating for the refugees' return to Rwanda and aggressively attacked juvenile Habyarimana, who controlled one political party that was losing favor as a result of corruption, stepped-up repression, and a general downturn in the economy. That the primary reason for the country's economic downturn was as a result of the dramatic reduction in the price of coffee, Rwanda's main product. Civil War in Rwanda Habyarimana's regime was on the verge of falling apart on August 1990, when two of Kigali's elite fled to Kampala with reports of how his regime was falling. The RPF saw this as their opportunity to try and overthrow Habyarimana's regime. In late 1990, the RPF launched its first assault from Rwanda, sparking the start of a civil war that would last four years. Sadly, the October invasion was a failure. Friend Rigirma's death on the second day of the assault left his fellow officers in shock and dejected. In addition, the invasion brought France and other nations into the conflict, and they started fighting for the Rwandan government. Paul Kagame commanded the Rwandan Patriotic Front, its military component and the Rwandan Patriot Army, in their uprising against President Habyarimana's corrupt government in the early 1990s. Kagame's group was able to annex territory in northern Rwanda while confronting strong military support from France. A deal was reached on August 1993 to establish a broad-based transitional administration that would include the RPF after years of sporadic peace discussions. Hutu extremists, on the other hand, fiercely rejected the idea and stepped up their propaganda to incite racial conflict. After President Habyarimana and Burundian President Ciprian Teriyamura's plans were shot down on April 6, 1994, Hutu extremists executed Tutsis and moderate Hutus in a planned manner. Kagame's RPF continued the battle after rejecting the Hutu extremists and Rim government's legitimacy. On July 4, 1994, the RPF took control of Kigali after fierce combat, which sparked a huge exodus of terrified and devastated Rwandans. On the evening of April 6, 1994, a plane carrying juvenile Habyarimana and Burundian president, Ciprian Teriyamira, was shot down over Kigali. It killed everyone on board. The next day, Madai Magath, who was prime minister, was also assassinated alongside 10 Belgian soldiers who were part of the UN's peacekeeping force in the country. Are you enjoying this video? then like and subscribe to the new tourist channel. Also turn on notifications so you get notified whenever we upload interesting videos like this. Let's continue. Years of healing and rehabilitation followed the genocide in Rwanda, with an emphasis on bringing those guilty to justice, encouraging national unity, and reviving the economy of the nation. Kagame indicated that he did not endorse the retaliation killings that many RPS soldiers committed. His leadership and political career. A transitional administration of national unity, headed by Pastor Bizamungu and Paul Kagame, was founded in Rwanda on July 1994. Although Bizamungu was the recognized leader from 1994 to 1995, Kagame was thought to be in actual control. Many people returned to Rwanda as the truth about the genocide came to light, hoping for a better future but Bizamungu resigned in the year 2000, most likely as a result of a disagreement with the RPF. 
Kagame took his position and has held onto power ever since. Paul Kagame won his first presidential election in 2000 after the Rwandan Patriotic Front had been in power in Rwanda for six years. The election was held in the aftermath of the 1994 genocide and was seen as a critical step in the country's reconciliation and democratization process. After his election, Kagame continued his efforts to rebuild the country and promote reconciliation and unity. He implemented several reforms aimed at improving the economy and reducing poverty, and also launched initiatives to improve access to education and healthcare for all Rwandans. Paul Kagame was re-elected as president of Rwanda in 2003, winning with a landslide victory. Rwanda broke off diplomatic ties with France in 2006 after a French judge issued international arrest warrants for several of Kagame's close associates and demanded that Kagame stand trial at the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, alleging that Kagame and other Rwandan patriotic front leaders had ordered the rocket attack that resulted in the plane crash that killed Habyarimana in 1994. Kagame fiercely refuted the charge and countered that France had supported and supplied the rebels who had carried out the genocide. Paul Kagame won re-election as president of Rwanda in 2010 with an even larger majority than in previous elections. The election was seen as a mandate for his continued leadership and as a reflection of the positive changes that had taken place in the country during his time in office. Kagame's re-election was widely seen as a positive development for Rwanda and its people. Kagame persisted in his efforts to reconstruct the nation and was praised for his achievements, including fostering a persistently robust economy and enhancing social circumstances in Rwanda. However, criticisms of his administration's intolerance of political opposition and press freedom, as well as claims that Rwanda is still involved in neighboring country wars, continued to temper plaudits for the advancements made under his rule. He continued to be well-liked, nonetheless, both domestically and abroad. Voters approved constitutional changes in a 2015 referendum that would allow Kagame to hold office until 2034 and serve a third seven-year term. He would also be qualified to serve two additional terms of five years. Kagame stated that he would run for president in the 2017 elections not long after the constitution was changed. The choice to run for another term drew some criticism from the international community. In the election on August 4, 2017, he handily defeated the other two presidential contenders, winning with more than 98% of the vote. Despite criticisms, he has been credited with bringing stability and economic growth to Rwanda after the devastating genocide of 1994. Under his leadership, Rwanda has become one of the fastest growing economies in Africa and has made significant progress in areas such as education and healthcare. Kagame has also been praised for his efforts to promote reconciliation and healing within Rwandan society and for his commitment to reducing poverty and improving the lives of ordinary Rwandans. Kagame remains a highly influential figure in African politics, and his leadership style and approach to governance have been widely emulated by other African leaders. Several African leaders are considered to be emulating Paul Kagame's leadership style. Kagame's life and leadership is complex and multifaceted. On one hand, he serves as a reminder of the importance of stability and economic growth in post-conflict societies. On the other hand, his rule raises important questions about the balance between security and freedom and the role of authoritarianism in African politics. Kagame has also been praised for his efforts to promote reconciliation and healing within Rwandan society and for his commitment to reducing poverty and improving the lives of ordinary Rwandans. Ultimately, the legacy of Paul Kagame will be shaped by the ongoing debate over the impact of his rule on Rwanda and the wider region and by the lessons that can be drawn from his life and leadership for future generations of African leaders. Hope you enjoyed today's video. We would like to know your thoughts on Kagame's regime in the comments section. Like and subscribe to the new tourist channel. Also, do not forget to turn on notifications so you get notified whenever we upload interesting videos like this. Thanks and see you in our next video.